empower me. Wow. Wisdom over wounds. January 3rd. Clouds and darkness. Clouds and darkness surround him. Psalms 97 verse 2. A person who has not been born again by the Spirit of God will tell you that the teachings of Jesus are simple. But when he is baptized by the Holy Spirit, he finds that clouds and darkness surround him. When we come into close contact with the teachings of Jesus Christ, we have our first realization of this. The only possible way to have full understanding of the teachings of Jesus is through the light of the Spirit of God shining inside us. We have never had the experience of taking our casual religious shoes off our casual religious feet getting rid of all the excessive informality with which we approach God. It is questionable whether we have ever stood in his presence. The people who are flippant and disrespectful in their approach to God are those who have never been introduced to Jesus Christ. Only after the amazing delight and liberty of realizing what Jesus Christ does comes the impenetrable darkness of realizing who he is. Jesus said, The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. L-I-F. I'm going to say that again. Jesus said the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. John chapter 6 verse 63. Once the Bible was just so many words to us. Clouds and darkness. Then suddenly the words became spirit and life. Because Jesus re-speaks them to us when our circumstances make the words new. That is the way God speaks to us. Not by visions and dreams only, but by words. When a man gets to God, it is by the most simple way. Words. Wow, Lord, empower me. What a simple word. The topic today is cloud and darkness. Psalms 97, verse 2. Lord, empower me. Lord, give me the wisdom to understand the things that are hidden from my mind, the things that are hidden from my spirit. Sometimes in clouds and darkness, we stand without full understanding. But Jesus came to bring us a simple word. Sure, the world calls it a simple word. But Jesus said, I speak to you in parables and teaching so that even a fool could not err in his teaching so that even the most dumbest crazy simple-minded person would not err in his teaching he made it plain in other words his words were plain they were not with exalted explanations that needed full interpretation he was explaining it to everyone from the simplest person to the highest scholar we find here clouds and darkness around about 
him. This is a description of the majesty of God, derived most likely from the manner in which he manifested himself at Mount Sinai. We find Exodus chapter 19 verse 16. God is often represented as encompassed or encircled with clouds. Psalms 104 verse 3, Daniel 7 and 13, Matthew 24 and 30, Revelation 1 verse 7, the notes also in Psalms 18 and 7. For some scripture reference, the word clouds is the common word to denote a cloud. The word translated darkness means properly thick clouds, cloudy, darkness, gloom. It would refer to a cloud considered as dark and as casting the gloom over the world. There is no reference here to the fact that the dealings of God are dark mysterious and un incomprehensible as a lot of people would like to make it seem it's dark they can't understand it it's gloomy and they stay away from it but that is a trick of the enemy and mysterious or incomprehensible as if he were surrounded by clouds and darkness this is indeed often true but that is not the truth that's being taught here God is suited to fill the mind with solemn awe, to make you go like awe, or with emotions of sublimity, righteousness, and judgment. God is a righteous judge. He is a God who will execute just judgment. Ooh, glory to God. During this time that we live in right now, just judgment is rare. You can see it started off on the wrong foot before they even get started. This is going to be a twisted up mess. But when you're dealing with God, you're dealing with just. That word just means perfectly right, perfectly righteous judgment. He is a just God. Though he is encompassed and said with clouds, maybe you can't see through the clouds, but he is a just God. And this is suited to impress the mind with profound, high reverence of God that he will do right. We may be assured, even when he covers himself with clouds, the fact that he will do right is suited to calm the minds of those who love and obey him. God is a calming experience. And at the same time, a calming experience, he will fill the minds of the wicked with alarm. The people that are wicked are fretful. They are alarmed. They are up in his they are running around have no idea what to do but God calms his family God is the calming sensation God is the truth in the place where you are the word of God say in the establishment the Hebrew word means the place the place where one stands or where one abides or lives. It is a habitation or a dwelling. Let's think about these words, what they're saying. It also means a foundation or a basis. Psalms 89 verse 14. Psalms 104 verse 5. God is an establishment. It means he is the place where you can stand on judgment and righteousness he is also our habitation our cohabitate 
a place of dwelling, a place where you can abide. It says, he that abides in the secret place. Are you surviving in the secret place? He says, come and dwell with me and reside with me in my secret place. Clouds and darkness surrounding the Lord are his secret places that God will allow you to enter into his space and commune with him or communicate with him. God's throne rests here. The word of God emphasizes basically that God's throne rests upon or is sustained, sustained by justice and righteousness. Nothing else would uphold the government of the universe. Nothing else will sustain any government. What's happening in our world today is that justice and righteousness have been attacked. Justice and righteousness in our church has been attacked by the enemy. Justice and righteousness in our homes has been put at the bottom of the totem pole. We want to be up with the Joneses or the classy people and our houses are a mess. Our houses are filled with injustice. Our houses are filled with the lack of righteousness. What do we say before that word? Righteous means being in right standing with the Lord. Analyze yourself. And therefore others will not have to analyze you. Analyze what you do. And then God will uphold you with his right hand. When you analyze yourself, you don't need nobody else to do it for you because you analyze it based on our Heavenly Father, based on His righteousness. That's why sometimes we fall out and weep and cry when the righteous judgment of the Lord just passes through our car or passes through our midst or passes through our home or through a church service that you may be sitting in. The righteousness and the judgment of God is so fair. The word fair, F-A-I-R. If you are the worst sinner in the world, God is a righteous judge. God is a righteous God. He will execute just, just, I'm saying J-U-S-T, exercise just judgment. Though he may be in the clouds and in the darkness, which usually represents evil. In God, God is light. The clouds may be dark on the outside to us. And the clouds may be thick, but God is absolute light. And we don't always understand exactly what the clouds represent. But God finds his pleasure in the hidden places, the solemn places. You know, I just want to share this real fast. I remember one of the first times I went on an airplane flight, for those of you that have never gone up in the air, are afraid to fly. Once we got past all those clinking and clanking sounds of scary motors and generators and things turning over, whirling and swirling, and once we were soaring in the air, I dared look out the windows after we got so high. And in some places, there were chests. Blankets and blankets and blankets of thick clouds. And what I was saying in my mind is that the clouds were so thick, 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 that it looked like 
with the trickery of your eyes and the mind, it looked like you could walk out on those clouds and that they would hold you up or that they would sustain you. And there were times where I've been in the heavens in planes and the clouds were dark and gloomy. And I shared one of these stories before that we left out of a women's conference in the middle of a tornado storm coming in out of Florida back into California. That was one of the worst storms I'd ever been in. The winds were howling and blowing and the clouds were black and dark and swirling and it looked like any moment it was going to snatch us. They were all so looked or had the appearance of being angry and growling type feeling and hearing them wind, wind, uh, wind whipping and rah, 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 all around you. And I remember when we hit something that snatched our plane almost out of the sky and the plane just fell started falling straight down not pointing down just it snatched us out of so high of an elevation that even the stewardess who had just began to come through with a little cart of refreshment she screamed and ran and jumped in her seat and buckled up in her seat and forgot to lock the cart and the cart was crashing back and forth down the aisle and I was with some missionaries. We were coming in from having been in a powerful meeting, Women of Power, I believe it was, a Women of Power out of, um, I can't remember exactly the city, but uh, we were coming through Louisiana. I said Florida, but I meant Louisiana. And we were on our way home, back to work, back to our families. And I thought afterwards, I said the enemy must have been mad. We were in his territory. And we were casting out devils and doing what we were sent there to do in the name of Jesus. And those winds were angry and dark and black. And oh my God, I could see the people. One of the ladies began to declare for the winds to part and separate in the name of Jesus. Part and, I like to mention her name, Evangelist Quinn Jackson. I barely knew her at that time, but she stood up and she began to declare for the wind to part and separate. I had never heard anybody pray that prayer, but believe me, it clicked in my spirit and I began to cry out, part and separate in the name of Jesus. It was just an agreement. In my spirit, she had such an authority over that wind situation. She began to call on the heavens to part and separate. The wind, she was calling the wind, oh wind, part and separate in the name of Jesus. And several of us began to pray that same prayer, part and separate. So we were going down, down. The stewardess was looking at us and she was scared. And there was a businessman that was on the left side of us. Uh, the two of us were sitting together. And the, the businessman was looking at us and he had unbuckled his seatbelt. And we were praying, so calling on the Lord. I don't know how high ele elevation it was, but we were trying to get up. Up above the storm because the, the the pilot that came on and said it's rough winds ahead. I'm going to attempt to climb. Ooh, I'm remembering this right now. I'm attempting to climb above the storm. And boy, he started to go and all of a sudden that wind snatched us back down and we were going down. And we were praying so hard in the name of Jesus. And that man was looking and staring at us so hard he got out of his seat belt and he got down on the floor almost under the seat peeping at us. And I recall looking to the left and seeing him. And when our eyes met, he cried out, pray, sisters, pray. He called us sisters. He said, pray, sisters, pray. He was screaming, pray, sisters, pray. And I'm trying to tell you, if you've never been in a plane going down, you heard some saints of God on that plane. Woo! It was a good group of us heading back to California. 
We were praying like we never prayed before. And under the leadership of my friend, Sister Jackson, Lord, we all began to pray to the winds. Like Jesus cried out. He cried out to the wind while those disciples were going down in the sea. Peace be still. And the winds parted and the storm was over. We was calling that storm. I'm sorry for being so country, but I'm from the country. We were calling those storms down out of the heaven. All of a sudden, I kid you not, this is the absolute truth. All of a sudden. Sudden, our plane shot straight up in the air. The plane, we were leaning back. We were still calling on the Lord. Honey, we were leaning back in our seats, calling on Jesus. And all, uh, because sometimes, you know, you don't have time to get on the phone and call mama and call daddy. Your decision is made within a few seconds, a few minutes, a few instants. You need to be ready on the spot. To call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. He will answer your prayer. If you're in trouble today, call on the Lord. Call on Jesus. Don't get on the phone and try to call me. I'm not Jesus. I'm Barbara. Call on the Lord. you got to be equipped in these days of injustice. you got to be equipped and ready to stand before the Lord in an instant. That plane shot straight up in the sky. And then it leveled off. And the pilot said, we're going above the clouds. Above the clouds. Up ascend. Ooh, I'm feeling it in my spirit. Learn to ascend above the storm. Learn to ascend. In the spirit realm, above the trouble. Learn to not wallow down in the trouble and stay there out of self-pity and feeling sorry for yourself. Learn to ascend. How do you climb into the heaven? When that plane, all of a sudden, shot through those clouds, that wrestling mess of clouds that was tearing us back down. It was a rough trip, one of the roughest i ever been on in my life. We shot straight through those clouds like a rocket. And above the clouds was nothing but light. Pure light. The bluest heaven. You know, we down on the, we're earth dwellers. We're down on the earth looking up at the clouds. And trying to determine how long this darkness is going to be over us. How long this storm is going to keep me earthbound. How long, this is the word of God said, by the time a lot of us make it to heaven, we will have cried, how long, Lord, how long, how long. Instead of learning to ascend with the Father, He's given us the ability to ascend in the spirit realm and real life there's always light up above the clouds it's always been there but you didn't choose to press past it you didn't choose to press in the spirit to get to where the light is above the cloud above the cloud the pilot came on and he said we are at a particular elevation, and he said, it's nothing but clear skies, straight ahead. And we began to clap and cheer. The stewardess jumped up and grabbed the cart because the cart was just banging and banging and banging and falling and going back and forth. Oh, she jumped up and she got herself back together and decided to go on and bring everybody a little, uh, little sodas and whatever they were eating and drinking on that day. But when things calmed down and all, I stopped and I asked my sister Quinn, I'm saying Q-U-I-N-N. I said, Quinn Setta is actually her name. I love to call her by that name, but she hates it. So, Sister Quinn, I said, how did you know what to pray? And I know, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what position she had, but I remember, I believe she was an assistant principal 
at one of the schools in uh, Carson, California. And uh, I didn't know her very well at that time. And I mean, she said, well, those particular uh, conditions that we were in were atmospheric. And when certain types of clouds clash, they create certain types of storms. Ooh, and I remembered it after she said it. After she said said it it was so clear and she said and the storms are clashing she said and it came in my spirit to call for the wind to part and separate the cloud Ooh, i can feel the anointing right now on this line because if you have never been in anything like that but then when you get confirmation of your spirit not confirmation of some kind of scholar that's down on the ground looking up and analyzing what I just said. I don't really care what you think. I know that we call those winds apart. They might have been going to part anyway. But even if they were, it gave us faith and encouragement. When she began to explain to us the winds and the clouds were the ones that were keeping everything in the they were clashing and lightning and thunder and grumbling and upset and she said all she heard in her spirit she didn't have time to think about it much she said she heard part and separate oh wind part and she was calling that thing out and I I called on her coattail I'm going to say it just like that because it confirmed in my heart call the winds to part and separate you get an explanation of that after a while. But God, I thank you for saving us that day. I thank you for bringing us through. God dwells in the clouds. Oh, clouds and darkness are around him. But God is pure light. He is the light of the universe. Father, I thank you for these words right now. Thank you for my friends, my family, my loved ones, my co-workers, my acquaintances that are on this line. Lord, whatever storm they are in right now, this is the word you gave me for today. Psalms 97 and 2. Clouds and darkness are around you. If clouds and darkness are around you today, right now we command them to separate and part in the name of Jesus. Challenge yourself, loved ones. Challenge yourself to analyze yourself. What is keeping you earthbound? What is keeping you down and depressed? What what is it that's keeping you broke? What is it that's making you sad? Every situation that I've explained on these hundreds and hundreds of tapes that I've spoken, God gave me the truth about the situations. And I shared on a previous one. Where there is fruit, which is fear, sadness, disgust. It's like being on a tree. Where there's fruit, there's also a root. R-O-O-T. If you're confused, you don't know who you are. If you don't know who you are genetically or mentally or physically, there is a fruit. That's what it's exhibiting on your tree of life. But if you're unhappy, if you're sad, no matter how much makeup you put on, no matter how many pretty outfits you put on, male or female, the heart is broken. The heart is twisted and tangled. The mind is confused. God said, Jesus said, you must put the axe to the root of the tree in order to get rid of the fruit that's popular. You know, there's so many people that say, I don't know anybody that can get free. I don't know anybody that has ever been set free from things that are in their life that are bad. Because you're probably dealing with people who keep passing around their fruit. Their fruit is strong and hanging on the tree. And you see some of these 
celebrities and stuff. You look at them, you go, they got everything. Because your everything is based on money, sex, and drugs, and everything that Satan can provide. But there, that's a fruit that you're looking at. And it's hanging on those trees. But when they go home, they're sad. They're broken. They are not fulfilled. And then we get a message stating that all oh, this mighty rich celebrity who has everything in the world, they have fame, they have glamour, they have everything they could possibly want, but they don't have Jesus down in their heart. And if they are spirit-filled or have been raised in church, they've allowed a cloud and a gloom to come in and squash what thus says the Lord for their life. And festered in that and lived in that and loved it. A lot of people love sin and sinful stuff. They stayed off in it. I'm not talking about any one particular person. But instead of grooming the ability to ascend into the presence of God, instead of taking an axe to the root of the tree, cut that thing down that's in your life. Don't just give up and say, oh, well, this is the way I am. This is the way I want to be. That thing will kill you. It will destroy you. It will cause you to destroy your family. It will cause you to destroy your home. Some people just love attention and glamour. Some people are proud. That is a fruit hanging on a tree that has manifested, which means it's shown up in your life. And it has become greater than you can deal with. You have to submit that to Jesus. Submit that thing to the Lord right now. And let God have it. Let it go. Stop going back picking it up. Stop going back picking it up. For the dust, said the Lord, he who is free is free indeed. Jesus said, you are free indeed. Be free today. I'm sensing this in my spirit. Be free today. Take the shackles off of your soul. Take the, the handcuffs in other words that's got you cuffed to this thing that is controlling your life. I want you to know one thing about the Lord. He's given you the ability to be free. So, Father, right now, for my friends, my family, my loved ones, my co-workers, my acquaintances, I'm speaking freedom today. Right now. Freedom of the Spirit, man. Right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be free. We lose the hold of the enemy. A stranglehold, I'm saying. We lose that stranglehold all of your life. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for every one of your children on this line today. Father, as I so often say, I don't come on here to make anybody happy, shout or dance, but to give them what thus said the Lord for today. I want you to know that if any of these messages bless you in any way, they're found on most podcast channels under empower me wow wisdom over wound god gave me this topic several years ago i had no idea what he wanted me to share and then one day all of a sudden it was here we come to set the captives free wow stands for wisdom over wounds playing simultaneously on most podcast channels is another one of my podcast series called the drill sergeant series making jewels i like to call these drills nuggets of gold for fiery trials if you're going through any kind of challenges that was a very hard time for me and i shared from the pit of my soul may it bless you and set you free and prepare you for this upcoming end time challenges so if you are on a subscription channel like YouTube, click like and subscribe. It would truly bless me. 
You can send me a happy face, an emoji, and I love you, Bob. <laughs> Whatever you want to send me. Send me a message if you like. But if you send me a message, please be respectful. Don't send me a message and offend my husband. I am a married woman. Please don't send me anything offensive. But in Jesus' name, I try to answer most messages as soon as I have an opportunity. So again today, the message was clouds and darkness. Psalms 97 and 2. Clouds and darkness surround him, the Lord our God. So Father, I thank you today for everyone on this line that are learning how to give you everything and release those things that have them bound. Well, this is Sister Barbara, and I want you to know one major thing. I truly love you. May these words bless you today. Remember me in prayer and know this one thing. I love you. Bye-bye.